Hey, gang, uh, this lesson is uh, we're transforming functions again. We're going to move them, stretch them, compress them, reflect them, all that stuff. And we're also going to add in odd and even functions. So here is from yesterday. What are the ways we can transform the parent graph of the function f of x? So f of x is our parent graph. And then the second part of this lesson is going to be what are the characteristics of an even function and an odd function? Okay, so remember from the last lesson, you guys, uh, uh, here's f of x. So f of x, this a either stretches it or compresses it vertically. This b either stretches it or compresses it horizontally. Um, and then this translates it, um, translates it uh, left and right h and up and down k, depending on uh, if h is positive or k is positive, okay? So just think um, uh, h is always opposite. This is always same right here, okay? And the bigger a is, the more it gets stretched. The bigger b is, say like this was 2, then this would be 1 half. I think we used 2 in the last lesson. Okay, so um, if this was one-fourth, it would stretch it horizontally bigger. And then um, if B was, say, one-fourth, then one over one-fourth is actually four. And what that does is it compresses it horizontally, okay? And if that's negative, it reflects it over the x-axis. And if that's negative, it reflects it over the y-axis. All right, we'll do some of that here. So here's the graph of f of x equals x squared. So here's a zero squared, negative one squared is one. Uh, positive 1 squared is 1, negative 2 squared is positive 4, same with positive 2 squared. If I did 1 half, 1 half squared, it would go over a half, and then a half squared is a fourth. So it would go up just barely on both sides right there. So anyways, y equals x squared makes this U-shaped graph right there, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, transform this graph into g sub 1 of x, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by negative 3 out here. So this is going to be a, a vertical stretch because it's bigger than 1, the absolute value. And since it's negative, it's going to get reflected. And then it's going to be shifted to the right 2 down 4. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and um, that negative 3 gives a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 and reflects it over. So this graph is going to be shifted down. It's going to be reflected over. And let's go over here to the vertex at positive 2, negative 4. Remember, opposite, th same, okay? And uh, b equals 1, so there's no horizontal stretch, so it's not going to be stretched uh, horizontally right there. All right, so uh, anyway, so uh, the t so let's go to the right 2, down 4, and we're going to go ahead and put uh, plot the point. So to the right 2, down 4 is where our, our parabola starts. We know it's going down, okay? And then um, instead of going over 1, down 1, like this went over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. This is going over 1, down, because it's negative, down 3. So over 1, down 3. If we went over 2, see here we went over 2, up 4. This would be over 2, down 3 times 4, which would be 12. It would be down here somewhere, okay? All right, so I don't have enough room on the graph. It's way down here. So our parabola is going to be a skinnier one. There it is right there, okay? All right, let's try this one here. Okay, so here uh, we're going to have a horizontal movement because of the 2 right there, okay? And we're going to shift it to the uh, left, 5, up 2, okay? Let's go ahead and um, uh, translate left, 5, up 2, so over 5, up 2. Okay, never mind this one anymore. This was g of 1 of x. Now we're doing g of 2 of x. All right, so that's positive right there. And this says we're going to have a, a horizontal uh, translation of 2 right there. Okay, so it's stretched horizontally by a factor of 2. So instead of going over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, instead we go over 2 times 1, up 1, over 2 times 2, up 4. So we're, we're going over... Uh, twice the amount right there because of that 2 right there. That 2 says we're going to go over 2. So let me grab a pin here. Let's see what size do I have. Uh, let's get about 14, I guess. Okay, so we're going to go over 2, up 1, okay, on each side. Over 2, up 1, okay. And instead of going over 2, up 4, we're going to go over 2 times 2, which is 4. So over 4, 
up four. I think that takes me to right there, okay? And then over four, up four, okay? All right, so it's just making it wider that way right there, okay? So there it is right there. There's our, our uh, g of 2 of x, okay? And notice how I label it g sub 2 of x, okay? Let's try this guy right here, okay? All right, so this one's kind of tricky right here, okay? First of all, I know it's being reflected over the y-axis by um, uh, because of the negative right there. And, and negative 4 is the same as 1 over negative 1 fourth right there, okay? So let's let's go ahead and move the vertex. So the, mute, the vertex is over there at uh, opposite same, so 3 comma 1 right there, okay? And uh, it's remember it's being reflected over the x axis or sorry the y axis. So so this point is going to be on this side over here. Okay. So let's go ahead. So here b equals the negative one fourth. So so um, it's a reflection across the y axis with the horizontal compression of one fourth. Okay. So what that means, you guys. Um, uh, let's go th over three up one right there. Okay, instead of going over on this one, we went over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, and we went over 2, up 4, over 2, up 4. We're going to go, instead of going over uh, 1, we're going to go over a fourth of that and then up 1. And then over tw um, uh, 2 fourths of that. So instead of going over 2, we'll go over 2 fourths of that and uh, up four, okay? So we still go up the same amount because this is influencing our X movement right there. Okay, now remember, this point becomes on this side. So we're gonna go over a fourth and it's gonna go down, or up one, sorry, up one, over a fourth, up one. And that's gonna be this guy, okay? This guy is gonna be over a fourth this way, up one, okay, and then we'll go over two fourths, which is a half, up four, one, two, three, four. So I'll plot a point there and then plot a point there, okay? So we'll go ahead and do that right there. There they are right there. This is gonna be a real skinny parabola right there, okay? So there's g sub three of x, okay? This four makes it much skinnier, okay? Much, much skinnier, all right. Okay, so let's see. So a function is an even function if if f of negative x comes out and gives us the same function f of x, okay? And all that means, you guys, it's, it's uh, if it's a picture, it's just symmetric with the y-axis. It's an odd function if f of negative x gives us the opposite of f of x. That's what negative f of x stands for, the opposite of f of x right there, okay? And if they give you a picture, then it's symmetric with respect to the origin. Okay, I'll show you that in just a second right there, okay? Functions, they don't have to be even or odd. It could be neither of those, okay? All right, so here's a function that's even right here. Can you see it's it's a reflection over the, the y-axis right here? It's a symmetric over the y-axis right there. And then so f of negative x equals the same as f of x, and f of x is a y value, so the same they have the same height on both sides for negative x and positive x. It's an odd function, you guys, if we plug in x and we plug in negative x and it gives us negative f of x right here, okay? So what does that mean, you guys? Okay, if I took a picture and if I could rotate it 180 degrees upside down, it would be the exact same picture. Can you see it's the same picture right there? Okay, so there it is right there. So I'll go back. There's the picture. Okay, and it just it just rotated over the. Um, if we can just rotate it, it gives us the same picture. Okay, it goes up and then down right there. Okay, so here it is. Uh, whoops, I, let me go back here. So, oops, I'm sorry. So it goes up and then down here. So, um, anyways, oops, I'm going a little bit too far ahead of myself. So, anyways, it's um, where did I go here? So sorry. I don't know how that happened. So anyways, I got a little ahead of myself right there. There's an odd function right there. Okay, so, um, uh, and we'll do that algebraically also. So determine if the functions are even or odd or neither. Okay, so it's even, you guys, if it reflects across the y-axis. Here's the y-axis. Looks like this is not even. Well, if I could rotate this, with, if I can turn it 180 degrees upside down, will this go here and will this go here? Yes, so that's an odd function right there, okay? How about this one? Okay, this one is an even function because it's reflected, it's uh, symmetric with the y-axis right there, okay? How about this one? 
Well, this one's not even or odd because if I turned it upside down, this piece does not go over here and this piece does not go over here, so it's not even or odd. I'm on my prep pair and you can hear a big old helicopter flying by. So, Anyways, we'll show you algebraically also, okay? All right, so let's graph g of x, which equals f of 1 over b of x, where b is negative 1, and we'll complete the input-output table, okay? All right, so, um, so this is, uh, affects our x movement. So our, so our f of x movement is going to be the same for our g of x movement. This is not affecting the, the f of x movement. When it's inside, we're just changing the x movement. So these are going to be the same as these right here, okay? They're going to be the same. And then so for the x uh, inputs for the g of functions, we've got to say, okay, because they wanted us to do b equals negative 1. So... So 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. This is like negative x. So if, the, if these are our inputs right here for our function f right here, this is the one we used in yesterday's lesson. Here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2. Here's positive 1, 2. Here's 3, negative 2 right here. And then here's 5, 2. That's all of these points right here. Remember, this does not influence the f of x or the g of x, so these are the same as these guys right here. This influences the x value. So, so what number times negative 1 equals negative 1? Okay, well, 1 times negative 1 equals negative 1 right there. What number times negative 1 equals positive 1? This is going to be negative 1, okay? What number times negative 1 equals 3? Negative 3 does. What number times negative 1 equals 5? Negative 5 does, okay? So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, graph those guys. So let's go ahead and graph these, those xy ordered pairs. So there they are right there, okay? And um, uh, notice... Um, uh, the negative reflected it over the y-axis right here. This negative 1 right here makes it reflect over the y-axis. So this black graph is a reflection uh, reflected over, and it gives us this blue graph right there. Okay? All right. So um, uh, g of x is just a reflection of f of x across the y-axis. Okay, here's an application problem. Here's an old bridge. This is example 2 on page 258. If you're in my class, I'm just going to have you watch this uh, lesson here. So it's an old bridge that uses a parabola arch for support. So if you see old bridges, they have these arches right here, and that is their support right there, okay? And the units are in feet, and the vertex is at point C. So this is HK, 27, negative 5. Find a quadratic function that models this arc right here, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So we're, our goal right here is to get it into g of x equals a times f of x minus h uh, uh, plus k. Now notice there's no b in here or 1 over b right here. Well, since it's uh, f of x equals x squared, we don't have to worry about the positive or the negative part because it's being squared. So what we can do is just bring the b out here and it just gets absorbed into the a. It's just a number. It's just a constant. Okay. So, so the b, since it's being squared, we don't have to worry about the sign. So we just pulled it out here and absorbed it in the a. Wait till you get the calculus and you start doing the plus c stuff. It's just a constant. It's just a number. Okay. So the number in here gets absorbed with this number here and we still call it a. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's go ahead and plug in hk right there. Okay. So since hk is 27, negative 5, then we plugged in hk. Okay. So 27, negative 5. Remember, opposite same. So this was a positive 25 right there. All right. So now, you guys, we need to get a. All right. And so to get a, we can just substitute any one of these points. The book substituted in this point. I'm going to substitute in this point for two reasons, because the book did that one. And this is a smaller number. I'd rather deal with smaller numbers. So this is x. This is um, uh, y right here, or f of x, okay? So this is x, uh, or g of x, okay? So x, g of x. So the negative 20 is going to go right here, and the 2 is going to go right here, and we solve for a right there, okay? So let's go ahead and plug it in. So negative 2 minus 27 is negative 25 right there, okay? Now remember, f of x equals x squared. So f of negative 25 is going to be negative 25 squared, Okay, whoops, I just slid that up right there. So negative 25 squared, you guys, is 625. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in 625. Whoops, I forgot. I added 5. I did plus 5 and plus 5, and negative 20 plus 5 is negative 15. 
Okay, and then so f of negative 25 equals negative 25 squared, which is 625. So let's go ahead and substitute that in right here. So we have negative 15 equals a times 625 divided by 625. And we, we can divide both of those by 5. And we get a to be negative 3 over 125. So here's our function right there. g of x equals negative 3, 1 25th, f of x minus 27 minus 5. Okay, you're going to have one just like that on your assignment right there. And there is some domain restrictions, you guys. The bridge only starts and ends right here. So the domain restrictions is uh, here x goes from 2 to 52. So they would like you to recognize that there are domain issues. So remember this from uh, IM2. This says the set. Remember that, these funny brackets. The set of x such that x is between negative 2 and 52 inclusively. We say it's something like that, okay? All right. So, all right. So determine algebraically whether the function is even, odd, or neither. Remember, you guys, if it's even, then whatever we plug in f of negative x, it just pop, pops out our function f of x again. So, and then if we plug in f of negative x, then it pops out the opposite of our function. So, when we determine algebraically, you guys, we're going to go ahead and plug in f of negative x into all of these. And let's see, does it give a, does it come out to be the same as f of x? Or does it come out to be opposite of f of x? Or is it neither? Okay, so here, let's just simplify this. At, uh, 4 times negative x is negative 4x. Okay, now, is f of negative x, look at negative 4x plus 5 and 4x plus 5. These aren't equal. They're not opposites of each other. They would be opposites if that was turned out to be a plus 5, but it's not. Okay, negative 4x minus 5 is not the opposite of 4x minus 5, so this one's neither. Okay, dirty rats, they, they gave us a neither right off the bat. Okay, over here, negative x cubed. Well, a negative to an odd power becomes negative, so this stays as negative x cubed. And then here we have minus a minus x, that becomes plus x. Okay, now... Is this the opposite of this? Is um, If I change and put a negative 1 on this side, will it get me this? Yes, it is. It's the opposite of f of x. So when it's the opposite, it's an odd function. Okay. When we have a negative to an even power, this is positive. So this is positive x to the fourth. This is positive x squared minus 7. Okay, now how is this in relationship to this? It's the same thing. It's just f of x. Therefore, when it pops out to be f of x, it's an even function right there, okay? All right, you guys, if you are in my class, you're going to get that. Take care.